Hi, this is Eric, and this is episode 21 of Survival Medicine, and we're going to talk about the top killers worldwide. So, looking at the World Health Organization, they divide the top kill, 10 killers worldwide into three income levels, low, medium, and high income. Uh, obviously, the more destitute parts of the world would be low income, the United States would be considered high income. And, and the reason I want to talk about this is it gives us a starting point for planning and education. What do we need to learn? What do we need to do? What can we uh, incorporate in our daily lives and routines as preventative uh, measures? Uh, and if you want to know uh, where to find this, the uh, link uh, for the fact sheet from the World Health Organization is uh, right there at the bottom. So let's break this up. Let's tackle lower income first. Uh, the top killer worldwide in low income areas is pneumonia or lower respiratory uh, tract infections and this is considered separate from tuberculosis tuberculosis although it's a respiratory tract infection that's not included as as part of that uh, there's also coronary artery disease uh, diarrhea illnesses uh, things related to hiv and aids stroke copd which is emphysema related to smoking tb neonatal infections malaria prematurity and low birth weight so um, the things highlighted in bold and red here, lower respiratory tract infections, coronary disease, stroke, and cardiovascular disease, and COPD, these four things remain in the top 10 for all three income classes. Um, you'll see things like diarrhea, illness, and AIDS, and uh, those sorts of things change and drop off as we go up in the income level. Now, I want to take a second to talk about malaria. We don't think of malaria as uh, an infection here in the United States whatsoever, but Malaria was not eradicated from the U.S. until 1951. Um, so we've had malaria throughout the United States uh, for most of our, uh, uh, basically, existence as a, as a nation. Um, and it was only recently eradicated, and DDT had a, a big impact in that. Uh, the fact that DDT is now uh, considered, uh, you know, something that we should avoid because of uh, potential carcinogen, effects I think is a, a fascinating story and one that may be a little misplaced. Um, some of the data about DDT actually shows that it's nowhere near as dangerous as people uh, speculated or led to believe. Um, I think it was uh, uh, by a fringe group that really had a particular agenda. And if you consider the amount of lives, say, let's say even if DDT did cause some small percentage of cancers, the amount of lives that it saves is enormous. If uh, DDT could be applied in places like Africa or other uh, malaria-stricken uh, countries and continents, um, it would save millions of lives a year. Uh, but again, that's a complete side note. Um, but imagine something very catastrophic, very unlikely, but very catastrophic, um, completely disrupting uh, some basic services in an industrialized nation like the United States. Uh, I have no doubt that over time, malaria would be reintroduced into the area. There's places in northern Mexico that have malaria. Uh, there's Central and South America, uh, obviously Africa, India. Uh, and so just by travel alone, um, there's the distinct possibility this could be uh, spread um, if basic preventative services were, were no longer in place. All right, middle income. Now the top four are stroke and cardiovascular disease, coronary heart uh, disease, emphysema, lower respiratory tract infections, again, our top four. And then if you look at these other things, auto fatalities now pop up uh, and a variety of cancers. Uh, diabetes now enters into our list. So as we take care of some of the infectious diseases, other things uh, that are waiting in the wings are now popping up as we eliminate some of the, um, some of the basic preventable things. On the high income, again, you can see the top four there. Uh, and again, there's more cancers present. Dementia comes in. You know, you're able to live long enough to actually get dementia. Uh, diabetes comes up on, um, you know, to position number seven uh, or uh, position number eight. And so, again, the top four are still there. Um, so what can we do uh, is we have to realize that in low-income areas, or things where things are basically broken down, you're going to have more illness, more infectious disease. And if you ever want to read about a fascinating physician that did some work in Haiti and, and, and uh, around the world, Africa, um, the Soviet Union, and South America, this is a, a physician by the name of Paul Farmer. Um, Tracy Kidder wrote a uh, autobiography about him called Mountains Beyond Mountains. Great read. Um, and if you want to read about 
Paul Farmer's book, to, I mean, want to read some of his work from himself, uh, Infections and Inequalities is, is another good book. Uh, um, a little philosophical and at times perhaps a little bit dry depending on your taste of books. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. But it gives you a perspective of what people face uh, with limited uh, resources and low income. Uh, it paints a very clear picture of how this affects health. So what can we do? Um, you can stay healthy. Uh, eat right, uh, good balanced diet, uh, good nutrition, uh, exercise regularly, get rid of the smoking, um, that's a big deal. Maintain basic hygiene, maintain st skin integrity, uh, you know, keep things clean. Um, and then I would know how to diagnose and treat certain common infections. I would know about diarrheal illness, I'd know about lower respiratory tract infections. And my next, uh, ep uh, my next video will be on lower respiratory tract infections. You need to know how to rehydrate yourself and others. Don't be a hoe dog. Don't sleep around. Stay away from the HIV and AIDS. And then from a cardiovascular standpoint, if you're over 45 or if you're over 40 and you have a strong family history, taking an aspirin a day um, is a great preventative measure. You know, what strength of aspirin? Well, you can almost just lick the aspirin and it seems to do good, but uh, I think 81 milligrams is just fine. Um, and those are some real basic things that you could start. And again, uh, knowing what the top killers are uh, can help you sort of pre uh, prepare and plan uh, what you might want to do next. All right, so again, thanks for watching. Um, next video will be on lower respiratory tract infections, and we'll talk to you then.